We are here to bring a new type of news show. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Bring news just for you. It's Tuesday, September 24th here in Seoul. I'm Song Yujin, and this is News Generation. Today, we're joined by Kwon ju Morning, morning. Morning, morning. morning. <laughs> and Yoon Seo. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of those in their 20s and 30s. Now, as usual, we're going to start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items trending online. The Seoul Metropolitan Police Agency has identified dozens of suspects involved in deep fake sex crimes on the messaging app Telegram. During a regular press briefing on Monday, the agency's commissioner reported that after forming a designated task force and launching an intensive crackdown last month, they are now investigating 126 cases and have identified 74 suspects. Teenagers made up the majority of suspects at 69%, followed by individuals in their 20s at 28%, and those in their 30s at 3%. Last month, South Korea was rocked by the surge of deep fake pornography being shared on Telegram, victimizing women, including minors. In other news, a forecast on South Korea's population has been released, highlighting the challenges posed by an aging and shrinking population. According to Statistics Korea, by 2072, the country's population is expected to drop to 36 million, a steep decline from the current 52 million. Nearly half of this population, 47.7%, will be seniors aged 65 and older. Meanwhile, the the global population is projected to rise steadily from 8.1 billion this year to 10.2 billion by 2072. South Korea is expected to fall from being the 29th most populous country to 59th, and its share of the global population will shrink from 0.6% to 0.4%. Finally, with the cool autumn breeze arriving, it's that time of the year when people begin checking the weather to see when they can enjoy the colorful autumn foliage. According to the Korea Forest Service, this year's autumn foliage is expected to peak in late October. Based on tree species, oak trees will reach their peak around October 28th, maple trees on October 29th, and ginkgo trees on October 31st. Now, this is almost a week later than last year's peak. So I want to ask our panelists, what are some of the factors that led to the delay in autumn foliage peak? this year? Mm, uh, well, as we all could have guessed, it's due to climate change. Mm. According to the Korea Forest Service, the average temperature from June to August this year rose about by 1.3 degrees compared to the past 10-year average from 2009 to 2023. And this increase is a major factor in delaying the fall foliage. With hotter temperatures lingering later into the year, the autumn leaves are arriving later. Mm, as right. Well. We could definitely feel the hot school scorching weather right. this year so this could be the reason why we're seeing the foliage peak later this year now to you Jian, i want to ask you i think a lot of our international viewers would be interested and want to know what are some of the best destinations that they can enjoy the autumn leaves if they visit korea at this time around well in fact every year i seem to take a trip with my family uh, to admire the autumn leaves every single year mm. i enjoy visiting nearby mountains as well as making journeys to Gyeonggi-do and or Gangwon the provinces mm. sometimes I often visited Hanaksa Mountain, Seoul National University, and Hangang River to see the autumn leaves. But to be honest, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the best leaves are right outside my doorstep in front of our <laughs> <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. Uh, but this year, I have set my sights on Hwadamsu, or oh. Hwadam Forest in English. Mm. I heard it's really popular. It is indeed. <laughs> as one might imagine, is as challenging to book as winning the lottery. Really? Exactly. Yet, yeah. yet. But this time, but this year, I managed to see <gasps> a reservation. So proud of myself. Good for you. <laughs> yes, I am. Well, you know, do, in, to tell you this uh, forest, Hwadamsu is located in Gyeonggi-do province. It is a calm place with mm -hmm. a quiet path full of spring flowers and bright autumn leaves all surrounded by a lovely botanical garden. Mm -hmm. And this place is very famous for the monorail. Riding mm -hmm. the monorail to see the autumn leaves is also quite famous. Sounds fun. Place. Right. I actually Indeed. searched, I googled it and the site and the view is amazing. So you might want to check Hwadam Sum Forest out. Now, for those looking to enjoy the beautiful autumn leaves here in Korea, check out the Korea Forest Service's autumn foliage prediction map, which includes peak dates for over 100 popular spots nationwide, including the Korean National, Korea National Arboretum in Pocheon City, Gyeonggi-do province. And that was our news feed for this Tuesday.
So we're now going to move on to our main discussion for today. Now we've covered many aspects of Korean culture here on NewsGen over the past few weeks and months, from food and cosmetics to music, movies, you name it. But today we'll be taking a broader perspective on K-culture as Forbes magazine recently released a forecast on the future of K-culture. So ji -young, could you tell us more about the forecast? Yes, of course. Well, the world, excuse me, the world renowned financial magazine Forbes recently predicted that by 2030, global consumption of Korean culture will double, reaching a staggering $143 billion. Right. Well, in an op-ed title, The World's Love for K, Everything Promises Significant Opportunities, the CEO of global consultancy, Ulf Ollens, remarked, in the past few years, the world has fallen in love with everything Korean, from <laughs> music and TV to technology, food and beauty. Well, this article highlights that key drivers of this growth include K-pop, K-dramas, Korean cuisine, K-beauty, as well as games, webtoons, coffee and alcohol. <laughs> the list goes on. That's right. <laughs> and according to the article, major brands like Samsung and Hyundai are now at a crucial point to further expand their global influence. Mm. Right. And taking a closer look at this op-ed, Forbes called South Korea's culture a global phenomenon and highlighted the strengths of K-culture, which has now become a core part of South Korea's national brand, as Jia mentioned, the K-everything. <laughs> so, so I want to ask you, Sam, what else were the main points that this op-ed pointed out? Mm, uh, Forbes also pointed out that Korea is becoming a great role model mm. for developing countries to follow. In fact, the article describes Korea as an attractive example for developing nations uh, aspiring to expand into global market. So why is the economic value of Korean culture rising so much? Uh, experts point to key strength of Korean brands, such as their speed of innovation, passionate energy, thorough execution, and endless hunger for the new things. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, because I think we all know that Korea accomplished this rapid development right, and it has become right, right. sort of like a cultural powerhouse mm -hmm. in just a decade. So I think it's definitely motivational. Exactly. Speed, passion, and endless hunger. I think these three words it can describe the Korea, the competitiveness of mm. Korea very well. Right. And talking about the competitiveness of Korean culture, the article also discussed Hallyu. And we cannot talk about the Korean wave, uh, which refers to the global spread of Korean culture that began in the 1990s. It has been going on for well over three decades now. And interestingly, the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston even held an exhibition this year dedicated to the history of Hallyu. So for our viewers who might not be really familiar with what the Korean wave exactly is, let's dive into how this wave first started. Well, the Korean wave, or Hallyu, began back in the 1990s mm -hmm. as Korean pop culture, pop culture started gaining popularity beyond its borders. It was initially propelled by K-dramas and K-pop, right. which captivated audience in neighboring countries. As these cultural exports gained traction, they paved the way for a broader interest in Korean food, fashion, and beauty. Today, the Korean wave continues to thrive, influencing global trends and even inspiring exhibitions at the one that you just mentioned. <laughs> And it seems Hallyu has turned from a ripple into a tidal wave now. Mm, right. So it started off with uh, the global interest Ooh. in Korean dramas and Korean music, K-pop. Yes. But it has now expanded to include food um, and a lot of sectors, which we're going to talk about f further. So my next question to you is, Hale, mm. according to Forbes, which sectors are likely to lead the next phase of the mm. Korean wave? Well, as we talked about before on NewsGen 2, the global Hallyu Korean wave that started with the k pop and K-dramas has now expanded into all different kinds of sectors. And one of the K-culture sectors Forbes sees as having a massive potential, growth potential, is K-beauty. Mm, right. And according to Korea Custom Service at Trade Data, the country's cosmetic exports for the first half of this year reached a whopping 4.82 billion US dollars, mm -hmm. an 18.1% increase compared to the same time last year. And this is actually the highest figure ever 
were recorded for the first half of any year. And Forrest even predicts that key beauty markets will generate an incredible 18.32 billion US dollars in revenue by 2030, taking the global market by storm. And fueled by this explosive demand, Korean beauty brands are planning to expand into even more markets, right. aiming to become the absolute favorite or Choi brand <laughs> among K beauty uh, fans worldwide from the US, UK, China, Japan, India, and to a host of Southeast Asian countries. Mm, right. And if you're interested in learning more about K beauty, we're going to talk about extensively on Newsgen in a few weeks. So please stay tuned for that <laughs> episode as well. Now, we've mostly talked about the op ed uh, published by Forbes. Now, I want to hear the opinions from our panelists. Mm -hmm. uh, what Are there any other fields or markets do you think uh, have the potential to drive further the, uh, in terms of Korea's cultural exports? Well, I do believe there are several fields with the potential to drive further growth in Korea's cultural exports mm. in the future. Well, given South Korea's sensitivity to trends and its, understand and its understanding of consumer needs, sectors like K-beauty and K-food are well positioned for expansion. Mm. Well, Zen Z's fascination with unique experiences such right. as the trendy mixes uh, found in convenience stores reflects a broader appetite for innovative products. I'm sure you will know the popularity of these items, the blending of beverages together. One foreigner who uh -huh. is a YouTuber, she mm -hmm. came to Korea in order to just oh. visit Korean convenience really? store here. She mixed what? Banana flavored milk mm. with hazelnut coffee oh. all together, and this became a hit. So this <laughs> I shows, wonder how it tastes. It was, oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> so Korean culture is captivating a global audiences mm -hmm. like this, making it likely that even more creative food mm -hmm. and drink combinations will emerge. You know, there is a term modisumer, mm -hmm. modify and consumer. So mm -hmm. consumers who enjoy products in their own way, mm -hmm. modifying the consumers, mm -hmm. modifying the products. Mm -hmm. This has gained traction among the MZ generation. If this continues, convenience stores may become the new culinary hotspots in the future, right. drawing long queues worldwide, I mm -hmm. guess so. And also, Korean fashion and eco-friendly products are gaining global attention and could become key markets in the future. Right, so the food and beverage industry mainly convenience stores and also fashion mm -hmm. are some of the key areas that Chuyun is eyeing on. Now, what sectors do you think have the potential to boost Korea's cultural exports, Hale? Well, when we um, talk about the Korean culture, a lot of people immediately think of the K-pop. Mm. But the, the, the industry that's leading in K-content exports is actually gaming. Gaming is already hugely popular, but right. its future looks also incredibly bright. And similarly, Korean digital comics, better known as webtoons, are making waves. And these two industries often intersect. For example, the hit webtoon Solo Leveling, which has over 14.3 billion views worldwide mm -hmm. uh, was recently developed into a game reaching global fans and let's not forget the rising interest in uh, Korean coffee and Korean alcoholic beverages uh, that we discussed the news channel before as mm -hmm. well soju sales in particular have seen a huge spike and I think dramas play a big part in mm -hmm. that how I mean how many times have we seen these attractive main characters in K dramas uh, sipping soju it's really hard to count <laughs> right 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 and I feel like that's the main reason why global fans become uh, curious about uh, the Korean alcoholic beverages. Right, so so many fields and sectors to still discover uh, when it comes to K-culture. Now to listen to what our international viewers think, we also ask K-culture fans which Korean cultural items or content they spend the most on. And here's what three of them said. Our first comment, you will be dealt with, says, I like to buy Korean goods such as accessories and plushies from a Korean brand shop near me. I, and I'm an avid listener to K-pop, K-hip-hop, and K-R&B. NEV97 says, I consume K-dramas and for food, instant noodles or ramyeon. I always want to feel big respect for Korea and surely I love to try to discover everything. XOXODNSOO says, I use a lot of Korean products, especially beauty and skincare products because their quality is incomparable. Also, I often visit Korean marts to get fresh and authentic Korean food and groceries such as Korean ramyeon, kimchi, snacks and meal kits. So from cosmetics, accessories, food and beverages, a lot of... Uh, diverse areas of K-culture that is gaining popularity worldwide. Now for more insights into the future of K-culture and its economic impact, we're going to invite an economics expert to our talks right after this break.
Right, so for our interview today, we're joined by Ho Jun Young, Associate Professor of Economics at Seogang University in Seoul. Welcome back to the show, Professor. Thanks for having me here. Thank you for joining us once again. So our first question for you is, are there any concrete numbers besides the Forbes forecast that show the economic impact of K-culture or the Korean wave on South Korea? Sure thing. So recently, the Korea service trace balance uh, has been in deficit every year but the content uh, trade balance continues to grow. According to the uh, Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism in 2024, the content trade balance has continuously expanded its surplus since 2018, reaching approximately 12 billion US dollar in 2022. Another report by the uh, Export Import Bank of Korea shows that the content industry has a significant production-inducing spillover effect on other industries. According to the uh, report, a 100 million uh, U.S. dollar increase in content export lead to a 180 million dollar increase in consumer goods ex exports. Well, Professor Ha, I'm sure you have read this article. The Forbes article projected global spending on K-culture to reach $143 billion by 2030. So why do you think the forecast is so optimistic? Uh, the reason is as follows. Uh, we need to understand the industrial structure behind the uh, K-culture scene. So for sustainable growth of K contents, I think it is necessary to gain an edge in competition with global big tech and media companies. Uh, currently, domestic content firms have far smaller scale and financial resources compared to platforms like YouTube or Netflix. Given this situation, it will be indeed challenging for them to compete with these global big firms. Uh, therefore, I think uh, simply providing government support at the individual content level will have its limitations. To achieve results as the uh, forecast claim, it is necessary to foster a globally recognized K-content company. Mm, I see. I think that leads to our last question. Professor Hao, what should brands focus on to sustain this momentum and continue growing K-culture globally? Uh, the content industry is becoming digitalized and integrated into digital platforms, with global big tech companies increasingly entering the content industry. So in this situation, effort to strengthen market influence through M&A uh, between domestic companies are essential to compete with global big tech. Uh, furthermore, I think it is necessary to support the establishment of companies by creators and the autonomous creative activities of content production companies, thereby enhancing the industry's value. Great. All right, Professor Hall, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so ending off, I would like to ask a similar question to our panelists. Do you think K-culture spending will actually meet Forbes predictions? And there has been a lot of ongoing talks on whether the Korean wave will continue to be strong. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I'm quite optimistic, like the Forbes and others. <laughs> I think, I reckon K-culture spending has a strong chance of reaching Forbes prediction, mm. so especially given the current global interest in Korean entertainment right. and lifestyle as well. So in order to keep the Korean Korean wave going strong, going stronger. Many companies here in South Korea should uh, prioritize continuous innovation and adopt their offerings to suit global tastes, their mm. interests like the trendy, the trendy mixes emerging mm. from convenience stores <laughs> by embracing unique consumer experiences and staying ahead of trends, they can maintain momentum, momentum that is. Mm. So who knew that convenience store mixes could be the secret ingredient to the next <laughs> 
big cultural sensation. Can right, that? Mm-hmm. right. Can that. So I think it's always important to do market research and be really keen and sensitive when it Indeed. comes to trends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what are your thoughts on this, Hyung? Well, yes, I strongly believe that Korean culture will continue to be loved and consumed globally. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I believe uh, to keep the Korean wave going strong, uh, it's essential to have uh, ongoing research and trust building efforts as mm. well. And continuous innovation and sustainable marketing strategies are key as well. Uh, for instance, when a specific Korean cosmetic brand is featured in a drama, mm-hmm. we often see a rapid spike right. in sales, but the sales can drop just as quickly afterward. So to prevent this, um, there needs to be a thorough research and local markets mm-hmm. and strategies that can appeal to the consumers in a long run. Mm-hmm. And also, I think it's important to have an open mind about what can be a powerful cultural product. Right. Like Chuyeon mentioned earlier. Anything can yeah, be anything, a powerful Anything like Korean convenience content. stores, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a convenience store, mm-hmm. but just in general, <laughs> what seems so familiar and uh, ordinary to us could end up driving up the Korean culture trend even further. Mm-hmm. Maybe new generation will oh, be the maybe. next factor. Fingers maybe. Crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll bring you more of the trends and the latest on Korean culture here on Newsden moving forward. Now that's all from us today, but Newsden will be back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Korea time. Special thanks today to Kwon Ji-yeon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And Yoon Seo. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.